Hello again, and welcome to another Engage Arlington virtual learning series on Amazon. I'm Roger Munter, and I'll be your host tonight. I'm the Director of Public Engagement, and I'm here with a great crew of experts for tonight's discussion on transportation and how Amazon's coming to Arlington will affect our future transportation infrastructure. Uh, joining me tonight, we have Arlington's uh, Director of Transportation, Dennis Leach, from Virginia Department of Transportation, I have Renee Hamilton. Joining us from WMATA, Lynn Bowersox, and a repeat guest because you had so much fun last week, Alex Iams is here from Arlington Economic Development. <laughs> so this is the third in our series, and uh, I think we're going to have a pretty exciting night tonight because transportation questions have been popping up in the queue for each of the last two uh, sessions. Uh, before we dive into the nitty gritty though, Alex, why don't you give us a brief review, kind of what brings us all here, uh, what was Amazon's announcement last week? Yeah, last so, yeah, so since November 13th now, the news has been out that Amazon is bringing at least 25,000 jobs to Arlington uh, by the year 2030 and could bring as many as 37,000 jobs over the next 15 or 16 years. So it's been a very exciting turn of events. Uh, we underwent a very long site selection process. Um, we had contributions from across the county government, across the region, uh, really pushing for this area and this investment and what it will mean to not only the local economy but the local community and the investments that will be brought about from resources that we will receive from the state and investments that Arlington and Alexandria will make. So. 25,000 jobs, 30,000 jobs, that's a lot of people. So that's going to put some demands on our transportation infrastructure. All of you folks who are joining us tonight, go ahead in the chat, in the chat boxes, give us your questions. We want to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, we have actually quite a few questions on this topic that have built up over the last few weeks. So let's turn to you, Dennis. How prepared is Arlington to deal with uh, the capacity that well, Iman's Oncoming is going to bring? I would say that Arlington has been planning for this for a long time. Uh, we have a track record of integrating our land use planning with multimodal transportation planning, and we're really excited. Pentagon City, Crystal City, Potomac Yard have great transportation assets. So we have two metro rail lines, the yellow and blue line, four-minute combined uh, headways in the peak periods, two VRE lines connecting us to the rest of Northern Virginia. Um, and every conceivable bus service that we offer here in Northern Virginia from our uh, WMATA uh, Metro bus, we have our Metroway service, our Arlington Transit service, we have service from Loudoun County, Prince William County. So we think that this is actually a really good location uh, to actually grow employment. And Lynn, on, uh, on WMATA side, you too have been planning for this for a long, long time, have you not? We have. We've been working very closely with Dennis and the county um, to invest in that infrastructure that he talked about, to improve our stations. And we have some expansion opportunities on the table even today. Our general manager recently announced that Metro would like to go to all eight car trains. That's the longest train length that we can support on all of our platforms. So imagine a Metro system where every train you step on now, you don't have to think about whether you're getting on a six car train or an eight car train where you need to board on the platform because every train that bursts there is going to be eight cars. That gives us a little bit more room in those peak travel periods where we tend to have a little bit more crowding. Um, and so I think that the capacity is really going to be there as the jobs come to Arlington. I think we're going to be able to bring not only local folks who live and work here um, and will want to live here and work here at Amazon, but people from around the region who are going to come in for those Amazon jobs as well, whether that's from downtown or uh, other places in Virginia or Maryland. And so we're very excited to be able to support Arlington in this. We think it's a great time to live and work here in the county. And of course, the Metro Way, which is just a terrific service, is the, is the whole region's first rapid transit service. Uh, Maryland's just now modeling after what Arlington has done. And so I think that people have so many choices here in the way to get to work. Um, the system is getting more and more reliable. We're restoring automatic train operations in 2019. That gets rid of that little herky-jerky feeling that people that ride our trains feel from time to time gives you better ride quality, gives you better trip time overall. So I think that the improvements that we have in the pipeline are really going to make the already rich transportation network here in Arlington just that much more appealing. And I think you've made the point, Dennis, that as far as the capacity goes, we're not just starting from zero and going up. We've, you've gone back in time and look at past ridership numbers, too. Yeah, so I think um, our transportation system um, 
utilization is really reflective of building occupancy. And well, be frank with you, Crystal City and Pentagon City have taken some real hits on employment. We're down, uh, in terms of federal employment, about 24,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. And we see it on the rail system, we see it on the roads. Um, I had to go back to uh, basically 1986 to find a lower uh, passenger count at the Crystal City Metro stop. So we've got some work to do to bring riders back to that system. Pentagon City, I had to go back to 2001. Um, on the road system, we have uh, counters uh, that really track traffic on our streets. Our volumes are down about 20% from 2000. And this is a reflection of lower employment, lower activity. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I think that's capacity that can be reused. Yeah, but in, and, and I, and I could, could not agree with that more. We do have that room. We do have that capacity. And now we just have to get people to want to try it. We're in a marketplace where people have so many choices, right? We were talking just before the show about scooters. Um, people on my own team use scooters. I know, Dennis, that you're a bicyclist. Yes. And uh, it's great riding transit, um, using bikes and scooters is good for your health. It helps you get your steps in. People in Arlington care about that. So we know that's part of the attraction to the system. It also has to be affordable. We've just put a, a proposal on the table to let you ride weekends on the rail system for $2 for any trip. That's really affordable. Um, I think that when you have choices between cars that sit in traffic, um, no matter who's driving, and a rail system that's underground and goes right beyond the traffic and buses that are in fixed guideways that don't compete with cars, you just look at all these choices that you have. If you have affordable, reliable, safe transportation, there's just no reason not to take those opportunities uh, to use public transportation here in Arlington. But of course, some people are going to be driving on the roads, and people are, are interested in how, how our roads are going to handle this. Exactly. I think one, VDOT and um, DRPT is very excited about Amazon choosing Arlington as home. And we are definitely ready for the traffic that will come and the traffic that's already here. Um, we started building a network of express lanes um, back well into 2010. And so we have that network. Um, by two, 2022, we will have almost 90 miles of express lanes. Um, we are focusing right now on 395, expanding 395. Mm -hmm. That's a very important quarter for mm -hmm. us because it actually brings people from Stafford and a lot of other um, southern destinations into the Pentagon, which is a major transfer station mm -hmm. um, that will facilitate the movement of people. But I think the, the key for transportation for us is that it's not about roadways. We, every roadway that we are constructing now is, is all about multimodal use. And a lot of these roadways are investing in transit. Um, and e whether it's 66, 395, 495, 95, we are investing in transit. So that will help to move people through this area. And of course, the, uh, all of these uh, systems are sort of interdependent. So I have a question here, for instance, on, you know, as more people are using the metro, well, more people are going to drive to the metro and park. Um, are there plans to expand capacity for VRE stations, metro stations, and are we planning to handle more traffic coming in and out of the metro stations at sort of the, the ends of the system? Well, from a transportation from VDOT and DRPT standpoint, we want to get people before they actually get um, to Crystal City. So we're actually installing more park and ride lots in the outer jurisdictions in order to encourage people to use mass transit. And um, we have a um, tra bike trail facility along 66 where now, you know, you don't have the option to actually bike into Crystal City, but you will have that option. Once you get on 66, you can use the WNOD trail coming right into the inner core. So I think those are the types of things that we are focusing on. It's not right around the stations, yes, we're making mm -hmm. improvements in the incentive package that we have from the state. The $295 million will basically address a lot of those um, issues as well. The only thing I would mention, and it depends on where you are in the region. So if you're in a close-in jurisdiction like Arlington or Alexandria, uh, we move most of our people between neighborhoods and rail uh, without using vehicles at all. Um, our walk share is generally over 80% uh, for our stations in Arlington. So our investments are more, how do we make it safer uh, for people to walk or bike uh, to those stations? 
That's interesting. I actually have a, a safety question right here. In fact, uh, uh, one of our viewers says, it seems like Crystal City Drive is in gridlock now, and it's hard to cross as a, as a pedestrian. Is there a plan to address pedestrian safety in, uh, in Crystal City? Uh, pedestrian safety is a major focus uh, of Arlington's transportation program. And the board has fully funded a program to basically rebuild the arterial street network in all of Crystal City and Pentagon City to make it more multimodal. So where we've invested in streets, we're widening sidewalks, improving crosswalks, improving crossings, um, and that work will be continuing for years. So maybe this is a good time to talk a little bit about uh, our planned investment in the future and, and how you know, Amazon's arrival fits with uh, the things that are in our current approved uh, CIP. Sure, so I'll start with that. Um, both uh, Arlington and Alexandria have secured approximately $570 million of, of funding through 19 to invest in multimodal transportation infrastructure in Pentagon City, Crystal City, uh, and Potomac Yard. And our goals are the same, to expand the travel options, to make kind of travel-rich environments even richer in terms of those options, more walkable, more bikeable, more transit-oriented. Um, and we continue to pursue external grants. Uh, the second tier of that, and those were already approved uh, by uh, the Arlington County Board, in our case, for the City Council, in the case of the City of Alexandria. Um, in addition, the state is investing another $195 million in five specific projects uh, to improve multimodal connectivity um, in, the, in, the, in this immediate area. And I think that, you know, just to add to that, Route 1 is definitely one of those um, roadways that when you look at it today, it is car-centric. Um, we will be working with the developer as well as with the county in order to sort of transform that so that you can address a lot of the safety issues and make it more friendly for bikers, walkers, and people who don't want to use a car. But still recognizing that you will have some people who would still want to drive, so we have to accommodate mm -hmm. them as well. So I actually have a, a, a comment from a, an online viewer asking about Route 1. Like, what is, uh, what is the timing and status of, of improvements to Route 1? Um. Well, we have just started that conversation. Dennis and I spoke yesterday about um, scheduling a meeting before the holidays, but I think it's going to be right after the holidays. Um, right, it's a new project for us. Um, we will have to go through an environmental process. We will have to also go through the design process. So we really haven't nailed down the schedule yet. Um, we have a broad concept, mm -hmm. a broad scope of what that project will look like. So we will continue to work with the community as well as the our local and regional partners in order to further refine and define the project and then as funding um, comes on board we will keep moving the project through. What is uh, what's kind of the vision for what you want it to look like in the end or if there is an end? <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think it's gonna it's a combination of it, it hasn't been fully defined but I think looking at Route 1 the way it is now you do have it's very difficult to get from one side of Route 1 compared to the other mm -hmm. so um, we are going to look at creating a boulevard mm -hmm. feel to it um, which will um, require us to probably lower some of the, the roadways mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's the broader concept um, when you talk uh, when you're speaking about the width of sidewalks and and what that landscape will look like. I think we're still working through some of those things. But I think the the um, in the big picture, the idea is to really knit Pentagon City neighborhood and Crystal City together. And Route One has been viewed as a divider. Mm -hmm. um, it's viewed as a barrier uh, to making those walk trips, bike trips, uh, connecting to transit. And so the idea is how can we re-envision the core of Route 1 uh, to better connect um, Pentagon City and Crystal City. It's been a desire of the neighborhoods to do that, and it also is a desire of the company, mm -hmm. uh, that they too want an environment that is more walkable and bikeable and more connected. 
Yeah, and the, and the way that they will uh, initially settle in Crystal City reflects that. You know, they're going to be leasing some buildings in Crystal City near the metro station and then uh, continuing on to Pentagon City. So there will be employment uh, spanning both of the sub areas. And as, as they sort of progress and build out the Pentagon City buildings, they may well um, get back into Crystal City. So it'll really be a blend in that those connections will be extremely important. And so I just want to jump in for one minute and put in, again, my shameless plug for taking Metro um, to these new jobs because I think that when you look at the choices that people have to make, and one of the things that Metro does really, really effectively is relieve congestions on the crowded roadways. So the more people that elect to, to be on rail, the fewer people that are uh, clogging up Route 1 or other uh, Columbia Pike or 66 coming in or any of the other routes. And so I think that when you look at what's attractive about Metro today that may not have been even as little as two years ago is our reliability. We just put something out that said we're going to move to a new 10-minute uh, reliability standard in the peak travel periods when people are commuting. So we have the rush hour promise today. And basically, mm -hmm. you get a credit back on your smart trip card if you're delayed more than 15 minutes. We're going to ratchet that down to 10 minutes come January 2nd and say if you're later than 10 minutes. Now, what trip in a car gives you that kind of guarantee? None. And I think that with that kind of promise and that kind of delivering on a reliable transit product, that you're going to see more and more people getting on trains, getting on rail. VRE is a great service. VRE, definitely. Uh, and I think that, in, in, and I've taken it many times, and I think that, you know, to be able to relax, read, sleep, um, work on the train ride in, to be able to get Metro from A to B, really, really a terrific way to go. And it's going to help with the congestion on the roadways, too. And it's a much cheaper way than any of the roadway expansion projects, I think. It, it, they have to work in tandem. Yeah. Definitely. I think VRE it serves um, a great, uh, gives a great opportunity for folks in the outer burbs to come in. And our sister agency, DRPT, has invested a lot of money into VRE um, over these last years. Um, one of the other things that we were fortunate back in 2016, we did get a federal grant of um, $165 million to try to unclog um, the rail system. Um, along there, so along the 95 quarter. So we have been working to do that um, with our sister agency. And Long Bridge, of course, is um, there. We're continuing to work with our local partners mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. um, deal with the congestion there because until you actually deal with Long Bridge, you can't actually in, improve the capacity of, of the um, passenger rail along there. So mm -hmm. we're continuing those dialogues as well. You know, I want to get back to something you were saying, Alex, too. Um, how does the, the corporate culture of, of Amazon in terms of transit play into this whole story? Mm -hmm. So from the discussions we've had and what we understand, um, they have a, a very high preference among their employees for uh, multimodal transportation, public transportation, biking, walking, having uh, being part of, a, of an integrated place that um, you know, you can get around in a number of ways. And so Crystal City, Pentagon City fits the bill perfectly. I think Dennis has talked about this many times as a place where you can, you know, you can get on a, on a plane, a train, an automobile, <laughs> a scooter, a bicycle, and you, you can certainly walk, uh, walk around to quite a few amenities. And I think, um, you know, the place is evolving as we speak, and it'll continue to evolve as, as more projects come in there, and it'll just become much more of that 18-hour environment that we've been seeking through our land use planning. The only thing I would mention that, that uh, we were able to confirm the other day is uh, that the company offers a full transit benefit for their, their Seattle workforce. Um, and uh, that same benefit is going to be offered to all the employees here. And we've got a great advantage in that they are going to be built on top of the rail system, either around the Pentagon City or the Crystal City uh, Station, with, with full transit benefits to boot. Mm -hmm. And to that point, um, Paul Wiedefeld, our general manager, was here last week meeting with the county uh, board and uh, professional staff to try to talk about rail station entrances and those um, things that will make the stations more convenient and expand right. vertical circulation and better, ca better capacity around rail. And so that, that, that work is going on and accelerating, obviously, in the planning stages um, now with this in mind. So I think we have you know, only good things ahead on the rail side with respect to that. 
Well, and looking ahead, we've mentioned a couple times the, the state's uh, financial incentive package and how much of it is revolved around transportation. Can we dig into that a little bit and talk about, in sure. fact, sure. what uh, kind of projects are? Yeah. Sure. So there are five uh, specific projects um, in the state package. Um, and most of this is stuff that, that both Arlington and Alexandria have already been working on. So we have a, a tremendous leg up. Um, the first is the Crystal City uh, second entrance on Crystal Drive at 18th Street. Um, which is really the center of Crystal City. Uh, we have been working uh, that project in close a partnership with Metro and the developer. Uh, the state is coming to the table with substantial new funding to help us get that built. Um, the second one is uh, in Alexandria. It's the uh, Potomac Yard Metro second entrance. Alexandria has a full funding plan for the, their main infill station, uh, but this is an entrance that provides more access uh, to their portion of Potomac Yard. The third one is a joint project of Arlington and Alexandria and the state, which is to build out our transit way. Uh, Alexandria and Arlington have built segments. Uh, this funding will allow us to complete all segments from Braddock Road through Pentagon City. Uh, the fourth is what I call a multimodal connection between Crystal City, VRE, the Metro um, Airport Station, and the airport itself. What an incredibly powerful connection to be able to go from an airport to two rail stations, a VRE commuter rail station, connect to our busway, you know, all with, a, with one linkage. Um, and, and then the finally travel to anywhere in the world. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, we have the Route 1 project right. to really try to rebalance that facility and make it more multimodal. Okay, so I have some more questions coming in from online. So Stephen asks, Will trains run more frequently when Amazon comes? They'll run more frequently before Amazon comes. So already on the table right now, we have a proposal to expand the peak hour frequencies um, beyond the peak hour windows that we offer today on Metro. And so um, till 10 o'clock in the morning and for an extra hour and a half in the evening, we're talking about peak period train frequencies starting next year once the board approves that plan. Um, I think that uh, that's an incremental step forward, but we plan to continue going down that path with more frequent service. We know that matters to people. We know people don't want to be waiting for too long between train intervals, and so that's the direction we're headed for sure. And that's the easy question. Now I have a more difficult question from okay. Stephen, and that is, okay, Stephen. how are you going to convince riders to return to Metro Rail and get out of the cars? So I think, Stephen, one of the things is this new rush hour promise 10-minute offer that we have coming up in January, which says if you are a peak period traveler and you're more than 10 minutes late for your trip, um, we're going to credit you back uh, for the trip because we really believe in our reliability and we're standing behind it, and I think that's the best mm -hmm. Uh, guarantee you're going to get in transit in this region. So that that's a statement of confidence about our service. So that's number one. We know on-time performance is the single biggest driver of customer satisfaction on Metro Rail, and we need to deliver on that. And it's gotten a lot better. We're now routinely over 90% on-time performance in the peak periods. I think the second way we're going to do it is by making the trains more attractive by making them a little less crowded, and that's why we want to go to all eight-car trains next year. It's the proposal that we've put in front of our board. It costs a couple dollars, but we think it's important for our customers to have that certainty about the level of capacity they'll find when they come to Metro. So I think more trains, uh, more frequent, more reliable, and longer in length is all good uh, for anybody who's interested in Metro Rail. The only thing and I would add to that is there's a lot that we're doing at the local level. Arlington is absolutely committed to winning back both rail and bus riders. Um, and we have an advantage. We have the largest commuter services program in the region and one of the largest in the country. Um, and it works directly with our employers, with our hotels, our multifamily properties to convert travel to rail, bus, or other sustainable modes. And we have a good track record. So we will be working with Amazon uh, to try to uh, convert as many of those new employees uh, to become loyal uh, transit riders or, or at or they live close to walk or bike. And as you say, Amazon has uh, transit benefits that they'll be offering to their employees, so they'll be part of the, the equation as well. Absolutely. So, were you going to say? Yeah, I think the other important aspect for us is you know the completion of 395 in mm -hmm. the next few years um, will also provide 
greater choice. Um, you're talking about HIV-3, um, where people can drive for free. You're talking about a better service as far as long-haul transit trips from Prince William and others. You know, for Amazon, folks are not all going to live in Arlington. They may live outside of the region, so therefore it's important for us to provide those services to make it easier for them to get right, there as well. Those VRE trains exactly. into Crystal City. And there's something, un something that is a little bit unusual um, about both the 395-95 proposal as well as the improvements on 66, is that the state made a decision um, to take revenue from those facilities and put it back into transit every exactly. year. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the commuter choice program in I-66. So each year, uh, substantial money is made available to enhance bus service in the corridor, to provide enhanced TDM services. And when 395 comes online, uh, the state is committed to an annual amount of uh, money that will go into transit. Okay, so Stephen, I, I hope that uh, answers your question. Now, Alex, um, we'll see if you can answer this one. Jennifer wants to know, where exactly in Crystal City will Amazon be located? <laughs> okay. um, so they're going to be taking some, some lease space for several years again as we go through the process of, of both entitling and then construction of the projects in Pentagon City. So the, the buildings um, in Crystal City, I, I won't be able to remember the exact addresses offhand, but they are very close to the Crystal City Metro Station. Um, two of them are there on the north side of 18th Street, and one of them is on the south side of 18th Street. Um, they really do, really did cluster where they want to lease space near the Metro Station, and I think they did that for a reason, like we mentioned, uh, of these employees wanting access to the Metro system and really being at the center of the action in Crystal City with the greatest accessibility to Arlington, Alexandria, and the region. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a lot tonight, Dennis, about, uh, as you say, knitting together Crystal City and Pentagon City. So I have a question coming in from a text uh, a text viewer saying, what's going to be done to ensure connectivity and transit along Columbia Pike? Well, we have uh, uh, funded plans uh, to greatly enhance transportation on Columbia Pike. Um, our board has, has passed funding for the reconstruction of all of Columbia Pike to improve um, the conditions for walking uh, and for uh, transit facilities. Uh, we will be building out our transit stations. Uh, something that most people don't know is Columbia Pike already has the highest level of bus transit service in the state. Uh, we move uh, over 16,000 people a day uh, on transit, and they connect directly to Pentagon City and the site of um, the Amazon's um, campus as they begin to build new buildings. Uh, we also have active plans to knit that service together with our Metroway service, so it will be a seamless link between Columbia Pike and then Metro Way through Pentagon City, Crystal City, and down the Braddock Road in Alexandria. Um, can you talk a little bit more, as another question I have coming in here, uh, about the location of the two metro stops that are going to be part of the incentive package? Where's the Pentagon Yard metro station going to be? And uh, I don't know if the other one is the second entrance to Sure. I'll Crystal start City. with the one I'm far more familiar with, which is the one in Arlington. Uh, uh, the second entrance would be right at uh, a Crystal Drive and 18th on the northwest corner. Um, it really is highly visible for all of Crystal Drive. It puts it directly across the street from our Metro Ray service, as well as a direct walking link to VRE. Um, so that's the Arlington location. Uh, Potomac Yard is actually um, a little bit south of the movie theater um, in, the, in the shopping center of Potomac Yard. Um, I've looked at the plans, but not not recently. <laughs> so the Crystal City stop, that's the, the one, the current uh, entrance is 18th and Bell. This is basically just two blocks down, straight down to Crystal Drive. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and OK, I have another question about, uh, <laughs> well, my, that question just disappeared. So I'm going to ask a, a totally <laughs> different question. Um, I've got a lot of chatter. Uh, we've heard a lot of chatter about uh, as we get more jobs and, and more people flying in to Amazon, uh, how is this going to affect National Airport, either in terms of longer hours or you know more flights coming in? Is there going to be some kind of difference that people will notice there? I don't believe so. I think National Airport is at a very high passenger capacity as it is. They only have so many gates and flights that they can get out per day. Um, they serve many different parts of the country already. 
one of the criteria that uh, Amazon um, had raised in their RFP was proximity to an airport, so they got that. Um, but there's also two other airports in this region which have the global accessibility that would also be beneficial to Amazon and many other companies in this region. Metro is, ex is expanding out to Dulles Airport. Um, Dulles Airport has added a, a number of new international flights in the past several years to serve these international markets. So it's not only um, the activity at, at Reagan National, but it's also Dulles and, and BWI. And um, I don't believe that there's going to be a significant change in the traffic pattern. Again, I think the other thing is that the, the arrival of Amazon into um, this market and in this region is going to be very gradual. So, um, you know, the, the traffic being what it is at Reagan and uh, where it could potentially go will, you know, it'll just, it, it's only can go as far as uh, uh, that, that facility can take it. And that's a point. We kind of make over and over. This is a this is a twelve year ramp up, mm -hmm. right? So, um, speaking of national airport, one aspect that seems to have caught everyone's imagination is the idea of the walkway from Crystal City to the airport. Uh, and I have several people asking uh, both when we might see that and also where it's going to go. <laughs> well, first I will tell you uh, we're just at the beginning <laughs> stage of of uh, actually the planning of that, um, and we really think of it as a really important. Uh, intermodal connection. Um, so it's much more than a walkway. It's actually linking together multiple transportation assets in Crystal City. So it's linking our Crystal City Metro, our Metroway bus service, VRE, a second metro at the airport, and the airport itself. What a powerful package of connections. Um, it is not an easy project. Um, <laughs> it requires coordination with the National Park Service because it has to cross the parkway. It requires coordination with CSX because it crosses freight lines. Um, it has to connect in to the airport. Um, so we're at the beginning of that journey, uh, and uh, I think a lot of hard work is ahead. Uh, but I think it is absolutely worth doing. From a I can at least say from a transportation standpoint. Um, and then the, your question as to uh, where it might be located, um, there was some feasibility um, work that's already been done on this. It appears that the most direct connection is roughly from the vicinity of 20th and Crystal Drive uh, going directly um, east uh, and connecting into the very northern end of the parking garage at um, the airport. Uh, why that location? One, it's the southern end of the VRE platform and it needs to connect with VRE. Um, and two, that's the bridge from Metro into the airport itself. It's, it's the northern bridge. Um, it's only about 900 feet. It's not that far. <laughs> but I, think a, I do think a lot of it's, hard work is ahead. <laughs> Every foot is. It, I mean, it, it, if it comes to be, I mean, it'll be completely iconic. There's, there's really nothing else there, like it. There are very few airports where you can leave the gate and walk into a business district in 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. That's extremely unusual. Um, and, and I think the connections, think about relieving congestion on 95. If somebody could be in Fredericksburg and instead of driving up the 95 through 95 corridor and having to find a parking space, that they can park at VRE, okay. take VRE to the airport, get off and that's one less long trip on 95 and 395. So I think there are lots of benefits to this. Okay, so Alex would like us to explain a little bit more about the incentive package funding. Okay. Ooh, not, um, not this okay. Alex, okay. a different <laughs> Alex online, although uh, you may want to answer this, Alex. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if it means the economic development incentives or the transportation. I'll speak to the economic development incentives mm -hmm. um, at, at the local level, and then we can speak to some of the transportation projects. Uh, the, the local package for the economic development incentives is performance-based. That means that uh, no grant funding is released until performance is achieved. In Arlington, that means re reaching uh, square footage milestones, that uh, whether it's its leased or owned op office space. And um, the total package for Arlington it could be worth uh, $23 million over the 12 years. And uh, that would come out of the transient occupancy tax, which is a tax on hotel room nights. And we're expecting growth 
in the transit occupancy tax that would produce revenue to to fund this grant. It, and it's the so the TOT money that's coming is is just from the growth. It's just from the growth, correct. So the the, the base would be kept whole, uh, and a, actually even within the growth, fifteen percent of the growth uh, could be dedicated to this grant, and eighty five percent of the growth would uh, return to Arlington County. So it's the percentage of the growth of people staying in our hotels, and that is the TOT. Now we also have a TIF TIF. Yes, so we have an existing TIF district or tax increment finance district to pay for infrastructure improvements in Crystal City, Pentagon City, Potomac Yard. Um, this was envisioned and adopted as part of the Crystal City planning process as we knew we would need many infrastructure and transportation projects to support uh, the land use and development that was envisioned in, in that master plan. And so what, with that one, again, uh, the base of the existing TIF district is being maintained as whole and a, uh, if, if there is growth in the district, which we foresee there, there being with this level of occupancy and development, uh, a portion of that will be dedicated to projects that are, are focal points for um, this build out, as, such as those that we mentioned, whether it's something to, get to do with knitting together uh, Crystal City and Pentagon City or something to do with the airport bridge. So it's really supplemental funding for those types of projects. Excellent. I hope. Alex, I hope you followed all of that from <laughs> Alex to Alex. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the big question is, I suppose, that people have is, am I paying? Am I paying? Am I paying Amazon to come here? And mm -hmm. that's, you know, yeah, and the, the answer to that is that Amazon is coming here and generating a lot of revenue for Arlington County, and that was really one of the um, the core rationale for right. pursuing the project. Arlington uh, stands to realize 315 million uh, net of these incentives over the 16 years that we envision uh, the performance period lasting. Okay, and now from Sarah. Oh, this is a this is another great topic of conversation. Uh, Sarah wants to know: Can you talk about Amazon's potential helipad? Who would like to talk <laughs> helipad? <laughs> I have not been involved in that particular issue yet. Yeah, I, I think Even that, though it is transportation. Came, came up in our, our last virtual session. And um, so the, the, the idea being that Arlington could explore uh, the possibility or feasibility of a helipad. And this being the national capital region, um, many other agencies come into play, whether it's the, the airports authority, um, the TSA, the Secret Service. Um, so the airspace around here is very restricted mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as it relates to operating a helicopter. And then um, certain zoning ordinance um, changes would need to be pursued to have a helipad on a building. So that's just something that's really in an exploratory phase um, and, you know, and not, not concluded. Um, so we've talked about transit system, we've talked about buses, we've talked about commuters and drivers. One thing that we have not talked about yet is parking. Um, so this is a question we have coming in from the neighborhood. Where are all these people going to park? <laughs> um, so, so I think one of the reasons we are particularly excited about the prospect of this company coming to Arlington is its track record. It is a very transit-centric company. Uh, they wanted to be in a location that had access to a lot of different uh, travel choices, particularly transit choices, rail and bus, um, and and we we can offer that. Um, uh, it's our understanding that the um, parking that will be provided for the employees is somewhere between uh, one space for every five and a half to seven employees, somewhere in that range, which means the vast majority of people are actually going to take rail, take bus, walk, bike, telecommute, um, carpool. Um, and that's a really nice fit with um, you know, our philosophy here in Arlington. That's, what, that's exactly the type of, uh, of a company that we do best with. Um, I will say that um, Crystal City has a lot of parking assets that are uh, incredibly underutilized. Uh, we have tens of thousands of spaces that are actually are, are empty on any given day. Um, because our, our vacancy rate is up, um, and a lot of people don't actually drive uh, to those office buildings. Mm -hmm. So again, this is another thing where we're sort of under capacity? Yes. Um, uh, oh, I have another question coming in from Dirk. Uh, I had a college roommate named Dirk. Dirk wants to know, what are we doing to improve the safety of bicycles and pedestrian traffic? Well, that is a central focus of uh, my uh, staff and DOT. Uh, pretty much everything that we do has a safety lens. 
Um, and so we are uh, evaluating uh, through both our capital projects and our operating plans, you know, what we can do to drive down an already pretty low accident rate here in Arlington. Um, and we don't call them accidents, we call them crashes. Um, so uh, it could be everything from up upgraded crosswalk markings to improve signage um, to bollards um, to actually rebuilding intersections, rebuilding streets to make them safer. Um, and uh, there is a, a very large pipeline of that type of work that is ongoing. Uh, we rolled out uh, four new um, uh, separated cycle bicycle on-street bicycle facilities this fall, uh, mostly in the Roslyn Boston corridor, uh, but there are certainly more planned uh, for this corridor as well. So another sort of bucket or category that I, that I hear people talk about are really Crystal City residents who are thinking in terms of how their quality of life is going to be affected, and particularly people who want to age in place. Let's say, you know, how is this going to affect my ability to age in place from either, you know, a pedestrian transportation perspective or an economic perspective. Um, a lot of the things you've talked about tonight are kind of placemaking, uh, which I think plays into that a little bit. Well, we know that transportation is such an important uh, factor in people's decision to age in place mm -hmm. and to retire in place. Um, and we know that having this rich transportation network, such as we have in Arlington and in this region, is an incredibly attractive feature as we get older so that we don't have to um, depend exclusively on cars and we can get anywhere um, using public transportation. And we know um, at Metro that particularly as the baby boomer population is aging um, and people have different um, abilities, challenges um, with their own mobility, that bus, um, which is 100 percent now uh, low floor uh, ability uh, on Metro as well as rail, um, and we have one of the most accessible services in the country uh, with our elevators and, uh, and escalators that, you know, that that's a very attractive way for people who are deciding to stay here well into their 60s, 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. 90s to get around in this region. And so we know that, that the assets are here and that that's, that's part of the attraction for folks. But it also requires um, density to, in order to get various services close by, you need a certain amount of density. Um, so having grocery stores, drug stores, other services in walking distance mm -hmm. uh, really uh, allows people to age in place uh, in a way that our uh, more suburban environments don't. Um, they're more challenging in terms of access. And the, the Route 1 changes that you've talked about, the idea of knitting together the, the, exactly. the communities is, is part of that as well, I would mm -hmm. think, giving a more boulevard -y feel. Um, so, a lot of what we've been talking about tonight is basically this issue of matching our infrastructure and services with the incoming employees. Is this correct? Uh, we've had a loss of capacity, well, not a loss of capacity, we have been over capacity, under capacity in terms of jobs and in terms of transportation services and what we're talking about tonight is sort of knitting those two things together. Yeah, I would, I would say that uh, much of what we're doing in places like Pentagon City and Crystal City Arlington intended to do anyway. This is an incredibly valuable location close to an airport, the nation's capital. Um, it has a lot of um, uh, assets to draw on um, and it should be a great place to live and work. Um, it just so happens with changes in federal policy, it was no longer uh, that place for a number of federal agencies. Um, but I think it is certainly is a, a good place um, to locate employment. So, the, I think yeah. the the one the, the richness of Arlington, but the richness of the region. Mm -hmm. We have so many transportation options and choices that people can use to get in and out. And if they live there, that's fine. But if they don't, you also have those options that are available. And I think that's definitely what would have been one of the selling points for Amazon coming here and, and we appreciate that. The only thing I would add, and it's really piggybacking on Renee's comment, is that Northern Virginia has a, has a really good history of working together. Mm -hmm. We work closely with our neighbors in um, Alexandria, Falls Church, Fairfax. Uh, I think Arlington and the state, both with VDOT and DRPT, have built a really healthy, productive working relationship. 
And I think that showed with the company. Right. Uh, when, in, in some of the briefings and some of their reviews of our proposal, that this is a region or part of the region that really works well together. And I think certainly that the recent decision to invest in dedicated funding for Metro to help us rebuild the system showed that yeah. regionalism at its finest mm -hmm. moment. And um, when you look at what we have to offer, it's not just the physical infrastructure and the transportation assets, but it's also our human assets. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have incredibly gifted and talented workforce in this region. Um, and I'm sure that part of Amazon's thinking was, how do we draw from that workforce? Yeah. We know how to move people from A to B. So we have now this um, em employee pool shed, if you will, that's large enough and that we can move around um, so that it's not just jobs for people who live here already uh, in Arlington, but around the, around region, the region that we can yes. draw yeah. into Arlington. I'm going to give you a specific yeah. example of collaboration that we gave to the company, and that was Capital Bike Share. Mm -hmm. um, Capital Bike Share was an example of an organic collaboration that started with Arlington and the district launching the service. It's now one of the nation's largest services. Um, it's a voluntary association of the jurisdictions all around the region, from Maryland to the district. Uh, we've more recently had Fairfax County join, um, Falls, City of Falls Church. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually, the, one of the launch points was Crystal City. Mm -hmm. that, was our, uh, that was our starting point here in Arlington back in 2010. Yeah. So the question we asked at the top, which was, you know, how well are we positioned to handle Amazon arriving? And I think the bottom line is, you're saying we're, we're positioned pretty well. Yeah. We're Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And I just, I, I mean, <clears throat> I want to really compliment um, Arlington County, the professional staff, um, the elected officials. In many ways, they've been preparing for something like this for mm -hmm. years. We maybe couldn't foresee that it was Amazon by name, mm -hmm. but in the eight years that I've been at Metro and working together with the county, I've seen this investment, the strategic choices about um, intermodal the mobility choices that Arlington has made, the Commonwealth being a full partner in that along the way. And it's just really incredible to see this opportunity now coming to fruition um, when so much has been done to lay the groundwork so that when this opportunity came along, you could seize it. And I, and I think that kudos go to a lot of the people around this table for making that happen. Yeah, one of the things that's really unique and special about Arlington is that we got this really bad news in 2005 <laughs> that the base realignment and closure was going to result in the loss of 17,000 jobs, and 13,000 of them were going to be in Crystal City, and 3.2 million square feet of office space was going to be vacant in Crystal City. And the immediate reaction was to convene a task force uh, and through the Economic Development Commission and start um, the process for a, crystal, a new Crystal City plan. What would Crystal City be like in its sort of uh, in the second generation of the users of the, of the office buildings that were there or other uses that may come into Crystal City once the, the federal government had moved to places like Fort Belvoir and Dayton, Ohio and Huntsville, Alabama. And all of that, um, it's, it's fortunate that we uh, planned ahead as much as we did. The planning process took several years and actually many of the employees who were part of that, uh, f f part of that action didn't actually vacate the buildings until about 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really saw the vacancy ramp up mm -hmm. is between 20, 2011 and actually 2014. And so all of this has played out in kind of, it kind of felt like slow motion and now it feels really fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, in, in, as, uh, as Lynn said, we didn't know who was going to end up and, and we've seen certainly a number of new companies coming into Crystal City or companies reinvesting in Crystal City over the years and that's, that's been very exciting as well. But to have this um, predictable source of private sector employment coming into Crystal City in these increments over the next 12 or 16 years is really, um, you know, just the just everything coming to fruition with this planning work that's been done. So Lynn's kind of given me a perfect segue to to pitch our next show, uh, which is going to be on December 19th, when we are going to talk about workforce. We're going to talk about higher education. We're going to talk about our school system whole bunch of stuff to talk about in that area. And I just want to say there's, there's a massive amount of information that we have online at uh, arlingtonva.us slash Amazon. You can view the proposal. You can see press releases. You can see all of the virtual learning series, the ones that have 
already been. You can watch those. You can see the schedule for the ones coming up. You can also see the schedule for um, uh, some listening sessions that we have planned. So there is just a massive amount of information that you can dig into on Amazon on the site. Um, and I want to thank all of you for joining me here tonight. Uh, I want to thank the online audience as well. And uh, I hope you come back on December 19th and for all of our shows. And have a great night. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Night.